When you automate a task in Google Sheets, you're most likely reading data and writing data from and to a spreadsheet. To do this, we typically loop over the data by writing some code in Google Apps Script. To do so, we use what is called a for loop. I'm Chanel Greco from Saparis, and in this video, I'll give you a deep dive into Google Apps Script for loop. Would you mind subscribing to my YouTube channel by hitting the subscribe button below? Because twice a week I publish video tutorials about Google Apps Script, Google Sheets, and so on, and I really want you to benefit from these trainings. For the purpose of this video tutorial, I created uh, a little document, a little Google Sheets document, um, and it consists of three columns, A, B, C, and a couple of rows of, I don't know, application status, just random information. And we're going to use this to demonstrate exactly how a for loop in Google Apps Script works. And we're also going to look a bit at, well, actually what you're learning here is, is also something that you can use with standard JavaScript. So it's pretty much the same thing. So if you manage to write and use and understand how the for loop works in Google Apps Script, well, it's exact same thing in JavaScript, which you would, for example, use in front-end engineering or in Node uh, back-end uh, engineering. Okay, so let's head over to our script editor. And we're going to create, uh, let's just call it for loop. We're going to create a function here. We're going to name the function and get data. You could call it whatever you want to. And I have this code snippet already copied. This is pretty much um, standard procedure to get the active spreadsheet get our range. We're using this notation here. So we're saying from A1 to C5. So we're referencing the cells or the rows and the columns here. And we're getting the values of that range. Okay. So the first thing I would like to show you is what are we actually getting here? We're using the log log method and values. Uh, semicolon. No, so let me call in here, save that. I just, um, I saved this file by um, using the keyboard shortcut for it. And we're going to run this now. It won't actually do, oh, yep, yeah, it asks for permission because it's the first time we're using the script. Allow. Okay. Good. So now it ran through, um, it's not actually writing anything to our sheet, but what it's doing is that it's logging the data to our logger. And how do we access that? Uh, view logs, or I just usually also use the shortcut for this, which would be on a Mac, um, command enter super easy. So this is what got locked out. Okay. This might still look a bit confusing and that's why I created a nice little overview to make it a bit clearer. Okay. So this snippet here, this is just, um, for us to reference the actual information of our spreadsheet and this down here, this array, um, is the information we get back. So this is, the actual content from our logger that I copied into this Google slide presentation. Um, let's, let's, let's have a closer look at what, what are we actually getting for information and what format is it? So first of all, it's an array, this down here, huh? this is an array. And we see that in our array, we have in the first position, another array containing the information of our first row. And then uh, from then on, we have for each separate row, a separate array. So we have an array with arrays in it. And this is what might 
um, make using the data from Google Sheets a bit complicating or a bit mind bending because it's not just an array we loop over, it's a two dimensional array. But before we jump into how to loop over this two dimensional array, let's back it up and look at some array basics. Here we see an array of names containing four names, four strings. And if we want to access Linda, well, then we, and this is standard JavaScript, AKA Google Apps Script, we access it by using the index, which is zero, because arrays, the first position isn't position one, it's index zero. And if I ask for index two, I get back Igor because it starts counting at zero, one, two, three. If you're maybe new to coding, this might be a bit weird, but this is totally normal. So just whenever you think of arrays and accessing information in arrays, you have to keep in mind that it starts with index zero, not one as we humans do, but at zero. Okay. So that's the first basic thing we have to understand about arrays. The second thing is if you have an array with arrays in it, and in this case, just to keep it a bit shorter, maybe easier on the eyes and on the mind, um, I'm just using an array with two arrays in it. So if I have a variable names and status and I access the index zero, I get back the whole array which in itself contains the string Linda and accepted. And if I take this further and say, okay, I'm going to access index one and then index zero, I get back Carlos. So that's in our array, the second position, which is index one and then index zero is Carlos. Okay. If this is a bit confusing, go ahead, pause this video and have a very, very, very good look at this screenshot here. And even better, try it out in your script editor and log it, log it out just the way I did before in this video. This is really, these are basics of manipulating and understanding array that you really, really, really want to know what's going on here. So this is super important for your understanding of, of coding with Google apps script, or as I said, um, with JavaScript in general. Okay. So if we take this one step further, let's make it a little bit easier. So let's go back to names. We're only having this one array with different content with our four names. So the way we would loop over this is with, as the video is called the for loop, and we create an index. So we say variable index equals zero. Now, very often in other tutorials or in other code that snippets that you might find out there and copy and reuse, you'll see that they use just let I equals zero. That's just to keep your code shorter. And that is absolutely okay. As a matter of fact, I think most developers, that's how they work. But I think especially when you're trying to learn something new, a new skill, like, um, like coding, you want to make something that is already complex as easy as possible. And that's why I'm a firm believer in giving variables a proper or maybe a bit more telling names so that you actually know what's going on here. And that's why I've called this now this variable index. Huh? So if you see just a let I equals zero, it's the exact same thing as let index equals zero, just that the variable has a different name. So we're saying we have an index of zero and as long as index is lesser than names dot length, 
we want our loop to keep on looping ahead. So names.length, this is, um, so on every array, you have a property. Property is always information about this array. And length gives me back how many, um, how many items or how, how long actually our array is. So in our specific case, our dot length would give us back, our names dot length would, would give us back four. Why? Because there's four separate strings in our names array. So what it's doing is it's taking the concept of index. And when we start out, it's going to be zero. That's what we defined at the beginning, right after the, uh, the bracket, it's going to compare our index to the length. So the amount of content in our array. And as long as our index is smaller than the names dot length, the loop's going to keep on turning. Once they're both at four, it'll stop. If, by the way, this is a coder joke, developer joke, an infinite loop is a loop that never ends. And I think actually one of the Google offices, they named the street infinite loop. I mean, for coders, this is super funny. All others are like, what's this all about? But anyway. So an infinite loop is a loop that never ends because there's no end condition met. And in our case, it's not an infinite loop because once index and names dot length hit the same number, it'll stop. And the last section of this in our bracket is the index plus plus. In JavaScript and in Google Apps Script, when you see variable and then plus plus, what it's doing is it, that it's just adding one. So what are what's happening in our index variable is that we start out at zero and it adds on every loop, on every time it loops and does something, it adds one until we reach four because that's when the name names.length is also at four. So that's when our, our loop stops. Okay. Good. So on every loop, what we'll be doing is just accessing names and index. Now, you know how I told you how if you wanted to access, let's say, Linda, it would be names and then in square brackets zero. Well, in this case, we're not writing in zero or one or two, but we're accessing whatever is in the variable of index. And on our first loop, it's going to be zero. And that's why we'll see Linda. And on the second loop, index is going to contain the value of one. So it'll give us out Carlos and so on and so forth until we've looped through our whole variable. So this is how the for loop works again. Also here, if this is looking a bit complicated, pause the video and have a closer look at it. What we'll now do is we'll jump into our Google Apps Script um, script editor and we'll actually incorporate what we just learned here. Okay, so we're back in our script editor. And in the meantime, I added the simple for loop and this is based on the information you just saw before. So I have here our variable of index that I'm starting at zero. By the way, sometimes you might see that the let index is created outside where you are. There you add. And then uh, they do this. Also possibility. Let me go back and undo that. So this is how we're creating it. Um, and then we're saying um, index lesser than values dot length. So as long as whatever is stored in index, we're starting at zero, um, whatever is stored here, as long as it's smaller than values dot length, which is four, then keep on looping over our data. And after every time you've executed this statement here, add one to whatever is stored in our index variable. So the first loop will be zero, our index, the value, and the second time will be one and so on and so forth. Good. So let's run this function and we'll have a look at our logs. 
what we expect is that we see our data row by row. There you go. So first row, second, third, fourth, fifth. Okay, very good. So that's the first part, but it's a two it's a two dimensional array. What if we now need to loop over the second array? So now also over the columns. So first the rows and then the columns. Well, also for that, I have um, some code to add. When accessing the data of a two dimensional array, what you have to do is you create your first for loop. And then within that, you create a second for loop. That's exactly what I added to the script editor here. This is our original for loop that we created before. And within that we have a second for loop. Now here we need a second kind of like index variable, but we can't call it index, of course, because we're already using a variable called index. What you'll typically see is like a variable J. I've seen that very often used by other developers. I to, you know, to, to make it easier on my eyes and also for you to understand, I call this variable column. So it's really up to you what you want to call the variable and, and just, you know, to keep it easy, I call it column. So we're doing its exact same principle as before. We have our column variable and we started at zero and we're checking that the column, um, that the loop keeps on turning as long as column is lesser than values and now index length. So that means we're checking. I mean, we could also just say, well, they all have the same length, but no, here we're making it dynamic. So we're dynamic. So we're checking for on every position of our first array, um, the length of that second array. And every time this then gets executed, when it's done, we add one to our column. And now in our logger log, what we're doing is we're logging out values, then index and then column. And let's see what happens. So we run our code and then we go into our log, our logs and bonus tip, something I've always done when I worked as a developer. And I still do now when I work on Google app script on automation scripts, I like to log out what I do step by step. So if you write a super, super, super long code, you run it and it fails. Well, good luck with finding the error. What I like to do is with every step or with every function I add, I lock it out and I make sure that it works and then I proceed. Okay, so here we go. Here's our, uh, the information from our spreadsheet, um, with the two dimensional for loop to get the data out. And obviously this isn't doing much to script. It's just to really give you a deep dive in how to loop for, well, first of all, how the for loop works. And second of all, how you can loop over a two dimensional array please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you like this video, let me know what other things in Google app script you don't understand, or you want me to give you a deep dive or I don't know further information about Google app script that you just want to share with the community.